I will start by we'll start by presenting um, ourselves. So I'm just going to follow with the um, on on the screen. We'll start with Dr. Nuru. Dr. Nuru, please, can you present yourself? Hello, Ulrich. I'm Dr. Nuruddin Bonkole. I am a resident in WFNS Rabat Center. Uh, reference training of young of neurosurgeon in Africa, and uh, I am currently in a uh, uh, tour in French, uh, but internship in neurosurgery department. So nice to meet all of you and welcome. Um, it's always great to have Dr. Nora around. For those who don't know, um, when we started this, uh, we were only a few of us, and um, Dr. Nora and Dr. Kabulo have been here since the beginning. They've been amazing. So. Uh, if you're looking for mentors, don't look further. Um, you have Dr. Nuru and Dr. Kabulo here. They're really amazing. Uh, great at uh, uh, guiding um, all of us, the senior medical um, neurosurgical residents. Thank you, Dr. Nuru, for being here. Uh, the next one is Faith. Faith, can you Thank present you. yourself, please? Okay. Um, I'm more local Faith from Nigeria. Then I'm a medical student in Nigeria. Uh, welcome, Faith. Um, what 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 uh, year are you to in? Be in your soil, yeah. What year are you in? Hundred level. Hundred level. Oh, first year. Hundred level. First year. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Which city in Nigeria? Uh, Jos. Oh, Jos. Jos. Great. Jos great. Um, uh, nice to have you, Faith. Um, so the next person is Dr. Natalie Gomsi. Nat Dr. Thank Natalie, you. can you present yourself, please? Hey everyone, I am Natalie Gomsi. I'm uh, a member of the Secretary General of uh, FN. I'm uh, a resident in neurosurgery in uh, the University of Fedboni, uh, Felix of Fedboni in Abidjan. Um, nice to have you, Dr. Natalie. Um, thank you so much. Um, Darwin, can you present yourself, please? Darwin, um, maybe he's not around, or um, muted, no big deal. Okay, next up is Dr. Regis. Dr. Regis, can you present yourself, please? You're muted, Dr. Regis. Wait, wait, hold on, unmute, hold on. Can you unmute yourself, your microphone? Unmute your microphone, please. Sorry, yes. sorry, do you get me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, so call me Register Kukam. I'm Cameroonian medical doctor and resident in Abidjan at the University uh, of, of Felix of Fedboigne. So uh, nice to nice to meet you all. And uh, also, I'm a member of African Future of uh, Associ Association of Future African Neurosurgeons. Okay. Um, thank you so much. We're happy to have you. Um, next up is Dr. Kabulo. Dr. Kabulo, please, can you present yourself? Hello, Dr. Kabulo. My name is Kabulo. I'm a final year neurosurgeon resident at the University of Zimbabwe, hmm. but I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kabulo. Thanks for being here um, for us. Um, Zolo, um, can you present yourself, please, Zolo? Uh, hello, everyone. I am Zolo Ivan. I am a CTA medical student from uh, Cameroon. And uh, I'm a member of the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons. It's a pleasure being here with you. Thank you so much, Zolo. Uh, one, one of the, uh, the, the, the great future neurosurgeons um, here. Um, Samuel, is it Samuel Chilawa? Can you present yourself, please? Uh, unmute yourself and present yourself. Samuel, if you're around. Yes. Oh, yes I'm around. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. My name is Samuel. Samuel Chilawa mm -hmm. from uh, Zambia. Mm -hmm. I'm a fourth year medical student at the Copper Bird University. Yes, and I'm aspiring to be a neurosurgeon. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for being here, Samuel. Um, Thank you. Uh, next up is Dr. Arno Duala. Dr. Arno, can you unmute yourself and present your, uh, yourself, please? The mute, the mute button is still on, so maybe if, if you unmute yourself, we can 
be able to hear you. Dr. Arno, perhaps he's not around. Um, uh, Asen Nyalunja, uh, can you present your... Oh, Dr. Arno, yes, we can hear you. Can you go ahead now? Dr. Arno, go ahead. Hello to everybody. Hello. Can you present yourself, please? Uh, so Dr. Arno is a, a neurosurgery resident uh, from Cameroon and in Cameroon um, currently. Uh, next up, um, Asen Nyalunja. Can you present yourself, please, Asen? Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Arsen Daniel Nyalunja. I'm from Republic. I'm from Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm an MD candidate uh, for this year, and I'm aspiring to be a neurosurgeon. It is a great honor to be a part of this session today. Um, thank you so much, um, um, Asen. Thank you. Um, there's someone who's connected, but with a phone number, so I don't know what the name is. Uh, someone's connected with a phone number. If you can unmute yourself and, and present yourself, please. Yes, you're on mute, on mute, on mute. No, yes, go ahead, present yourself, please. Go, go ahead, you can speak. Yes? I am Dr. Adieu Francois. Uh, I am in residency, first year of residency in Morocco. Oh, uh, great great to have you. Apparently, you're a friend of Dr. Nuru because when you said your name, he, he smiled. So that, that's awesome. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, we, we're always happy to have um, um, our residents here. And clearly, uh, a lot of our students are showing interest. Yeah, so, so our students are showing interest and they, they, they've been logging in. Um, they're a bit late, but they, they've been logging on. So uh, it looks like we're going to have quite a, um, a crowd here. Anyway, we're, we're recording for those who are late and that'll be, uh, they'll be able to catch up. So last but not the least, myself, I'm going to present myself. So I'm Ulrich Sydney. I'm um, originally from Cameroon. I am currently uh, at Harvard Medical School at the Global Neurosurgery Initiative. Uh, where I am uh, doing, I'm a research associate, and um, uh, we equally founded this group. Um, so it's a pleasure for me to introduce three amazing, amazing people. Uh, they've already presented themselves and they'll be speaking today. So we have Dr. Nuru, who's a neurosurgery resident um, uh, in, in Rabat, Morocco, which is one of the World Federation of Neurological neurosurgical societies um, training centers. He's currently in France uh, doing a fellowship there. We have Dr. Kabulo, who's uh, uh, originally from DRC, but uh, doing his residency in Zimbabwe in his final, in his final year. Uh, we have Dr. Natalie, who will be presenting as well, as well. She's originally from Cameroon, but she's currently in uh, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. So we have quite a good showing here. If anyone is going to tell you how training happens in Africa, it's definitely these people. So um, there's going to be a lot of knowledge that's being dropped. Uh, so I like the fact that everyone has been muted already so that we have no, um, no interruptions. So without further ado, um, I, I think the, the first person to, to, to go will be uh, Dr. Nuru. Then we'll have Dr. Kabulo and then uh, Dr. Dr. Gomsi. So um, Dr. Nuru, um, you can unmute yourself and go ahead. I'll just mute myself here. Okay, thank you, uh, dear Ulrich, uh, for this short uh, meeting. And uh, welcome to all of you who come uh, about this meeting. Uh, so what I have to say, the, um, I would like to encourage uh, everyone who uh, have this aspiration to, to do uh, neurosurgery. Uh, and uh, you have to know, um, it is important to have great uh, passion uh, about uh, neuroscience. Uh, you have to, to, to be a, a big fan of neuroanatomy, uh, to love, uh, if you don't uh, love this job, uh, if you don't love neurosurgery, you can't, uh, you can't uh, do residency in uh, neurosurgery. And I am, 
I'm so happy to see that uh, many people here didn't finish uh, their uh, medical sc uh, schedules and, uh, and they are so um, motivated, they have enough motivation to, to do uh, neurosurgery. It is very, very big, important things. And I believe that uh, these people will um, face and will um, be able to, to, to fix uh, any challenge uh, they will encounter. And uh, um, that is the, the one point you should know, passion, and uh, uh, you should, be, uh, should have great motivation. So uh, me, uh, I finished my, I, I performed my study, I, my medical study in uh, Dakar in Senegal after my, um, my uh, baccalaureate. And uh, after that, I, I tried to, to, uh, to, send my, to send my request about uh, scholarship of WFNS that take a longer time because uh, mostly and highly many, many, well, Anyway, uh, finally, uh, I, be, I, I was um, be selected about this program and uh, uh, I should go to Morocco. This was uh, another experience for me, uh, but uh, with my experience uh, to live uh, so far from my country because uh, my original country, it is Benin. So uh, it was not easy. But uh, I performed eight years in Senegal after I become medical doctor, and now and after to come to Morocco to perform residency in Morocco. So it is uh, residency in neurosurgery. You should know it is five years, and uh, uh, in between these five years, you should uh, have um, uh, you should learn uh, step by step. You should learn step by step. And what is important to know, it is your basic, you should um, learn more about the basic things you should know in neurosurgery. It's not easy. Uh, you should learn a lot of your neuroanatomy because the neuroanatomy is the way. And I remember when we start this um, lecture uh, uh, about AFAN, we start about neuroanatomy lecture. It is important for everyone of you if you really aspire to do neurosurgery, you should learn a lot, but just not one time, every day, every time you can, you should uh, read something about neuroanatomy, because neuroanatomy, you can learn that today, if tomorrow, uh, two days after you didn't uh, read again, you will uh, forget. So every time you should learn about your neuroanatomy, you should learn about the neuroanatomy, surgical neuroanatomy, because uh, you ha they have, uh, a, a little different what you can what you have to learn in uh, uh, intra intra uh, per procedure anatomy it is important also so you should always learn about that learn about the basic really basic uh, uh, knowledge in uh, in neurosurgery uh, and after your first years in residency course you should be able to fix about any emergency cases about neurosurgery how you have to to to, um, uh, to take care about your patient. Every topic about uh, emergency neurosurgery, you should uh, be able. Maybe you can't uh, perform every surgery in emergency, but how to uh, to fix how to to to. To, to treat your patient, you should know everything about that in theory, uh, in um, theoric, uh, theoretical uh, mind. And also, you should always, always take your shift like, uh, um, like a challenge because it is, uh, it is always uh, when you perform shift, you will learn enough about uh, your uh, emergency uh, cases and how to deal about the pathological emergency or this is emergency. So all these things is uh, very important to know. And uh, I think I will not, uh, I will, um, I would like uh, maybe if you have question and to tell, to, 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 to ask about that and I, it will be able to me to, uh, to answer you. And uh, also what I have to tell you is to involve about research because when you, you are a resident 
Um, and you have one case, you see these cases, it is so atypical. You should go to literature to read in a lot of articles you can read about this, this, uh, these cases. Maybe it, uh, this case it can, uh, you can write on this case and publish that like case report. But know that one case report that you try to publish, maybe you read about 20 paper around this pathology and that make you um, uh, understand more Anything about this pathology, so um, I think uh, it is important also. It is important also to go uh, to meeting, international meeting. It is the uh, the time. In this time, you will uh, meet many people and many and uh, different uh, um, uh, approach about uh, to treat. The same pathology, maybe in your department, not the same way you, you deal with pathology, but when you go to meet another people, you will see how they manage also, and you can take that and to, to try to, 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 uh, to do mix match and to see uh, what is the, the better uh, or how you can change your, your manner to, to manage your, your in, in your department. So it is important also. Uh, that so residency it is neuroanatomy shift you should take care about your shift and uh, always try to learn step by step when you are in the operate room with your senior or with uh, uh, professor everyone try to learn step by step and uh, I think uh, um, I can share my experience with you, but I prefer uh, to to answer your question, and uh, I think it will be um, easy. Thank you, Ulrich, uh, and thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, yes. Thank, thank Dr. Nuru. Um, if you have questions, you can um, you can write them in the comments or raise your hand. We will call we'll call to you. Uh, what we want to do first is make sure that um, each of the uh, of the speakers today um, get a chance first of all to speak in general and then you can always ask the questions um, right away after. Uh, before going now to Dr. Um, Kabulo, I just want to uh, uh, get, give the opportunity to Dr. Marco Meloni to present himself. Uh, he's been with us since the, the very beginning so um, it's always great to have him around. Um, Dr. Meloni, uh, please if you can present yourself. Uh, hello everybody guys, uh, my name is Marco Meloni, I'm a consultant neurosurgeon in uh, Italy. Very happy to see you again. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Meloni. Congratulations for your exposition, uh, Nuro. It's great. Mm. Thank uh, you, thank you, Dr. Marco, thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> mm. Yes, yeah, so, so next up uh, we'll have um, Dr. Kabulo, um, I gather that he has a uh, a short presentation he would like to to to, to give. Um, so that would be uh, really uh, interesting. Dr. Kabulo, please go ahead. Um. Thank you, everyone. My regards to our senior, Dr. Marco Meloni. Nice to have you on the panel. So yeah, thank you, Dr. Nuru, for your talk. Uh, I think I'm not going to repeat things Dr. Nuru mentioned already. So <clears throat> neurosurgery for me, it's a beautiful field. I don't know what else I, I could do apart from neurosurgery because I love neurosurgery. Uh, I love neurosurgery and the way I'm learning my neurosurgery, it's like, um, you know, in French, they say la petite vie en mangeant. So the more I'm doing neuro, the more I'm falling in love with neuro again and again. Um, it wasn't really easy for me at the beginning because uh, I trained, I did, I did my undergrad in French. Then where I went to, be, to do my neurosurgery, it was in English. So I'm from Congo. Uh, I did my undergrad in, in DRC, in Lubumbashi, at the University of Lubumbashi. Then um, I went to University of Zimbabwe to do my residency, uh, which wasn't very easy at the beginning because uh, I didn't go to school for my English. I was learning English while talking to people, while translating. If you read something, you go back home, you translate and so on. So it wasn't really um, easy. 
Then um, when I arrived in Zimbabwe, sorry, just give. You've been muted, um, Dr. Kabulo. Yes, yes, sorry. Okay. I just wanted to open the door for someone. Yeah, so it wasn't very easy at the beginning uh, because of language barrier, but uh, we did our best uh, to, join to join our colleagues and uh, who are now talking the same language after a few months. So I want to talk about neurosurgery. I want just to give you a, a, an idea about neurosurgery in Zimbabwe, how we are training in Zimbabwe. Uh, in first year, we do uh, four months of histopathology. And in histopathology, you do cut-ups, you go and do reporting uh, under microscope, you do post-mortem uh, examination, then you do also uh, um, lectures. And after that, uh, you do four months of anatomy, so you go in the cadaver lab, you dissect and uh, learn anatomy. We don't do neuroanatomy only, we do the whole anatomy. We do the whole anatomy, uh, like uh, two weeks of for lower limbs, uh, two weeks for pelvic, two weeks of abdomen and so on. So you are dissecting, you dissect the region, uh, we have a, a book. Let me show you some videos, uh, some photos of uh, some pictures of what we were doing. So it's like um, there, that's anatomy, what we are doing, cut ups. Here it's when you are operating, like that, that uh, fibromyoma, uh, which was operated by guy, they send it there, then you do cut ups, you prepare, you put them on the slide, then you go and do with the professor. You do under microscope. You, I'm sorry, let me do this. Um, then you do, yeah, under microscope like this. It's a huge microscope. Uh, it has a capacity of 11 people. So you be there, your professor explaining to you, he's here, putting the slides there. So everyone is seeing the same thing and uh, he's teaching you like that. What you are seeing there, that's a plasma cell, that is this, and so on. So after that, you do also post-modern post autopsies like this. So you go in the mortuary, um, you do post-modern examination like this patient. This one died of um, uh, hemorrhagic stroke with intraventricular extension. You see that clot, it's a very huge clot. Yeah, and uh, after this, then you go to anatomy. Uh, anatomy, you do also four months. This is our dissection lab. Uh, they only bring cadavers when you are about to start. And after that, they bring them back in the fridge. You see like that cadaver, we are dissecting. This time, I remember we did anatomy, then we're doing now chest. Uh, we're now dissecting the chest. And uh, after that, uh, with this one, we we're learning the pelvis, so it's like region by region, and you finish the whole anatomy. After anatomy, you you come back now to the department, and to the department, you start to to to, to do word rounds with your senior. They teach you now how to do neurological examination, uh, because our program is from January to December. It's no break, it's the whole year. So after four months of uh, histopathology, four months of uh, anatomy, you go back to the department, you start to do word round, and um, you learn uh, neuroanatomy, no, in neurological examination, you learn neuroradiology. Then other topics like neurophysiology, neuropharmacology, and uh, fluid and electrolyte, they give you like topics. Those chapters in the book, they give you like topics you come and present uh, to professors, then they start to correct you, they ask you questions uh, and so on. That's first year, then you write an exam at the end. There's a written paper, uh, there's a oral exam, and also a practical exam where you go in that cadaver lab, they give you a brain, uh, like uh, a natural cut through the basal ganglia, they start to ask you questions, then you reply. 
you give answers. If you pass, you go in second year, and in second year, you just do rotations in other specialties related to neuro. You do three months of uh, general surgery, where you learn the basic skills in surgery. You do three months in uh, maxillofacial surgery. You do three months in uh, orthopedic surgery. You do two months of um, uh, cardiothoracic surgery. Then you do one month of uh, ENT, ear noise and throat. So that second year is just rotations. You are going through uh, those specialties. And from third year, you start now neurosurgery up to the end. So in third year, you start with the neurotrauma. When you are coming from your rotations, you start with neurotrauma. You are at the front line every time. Um, you are on call almost every day, receiving patient in casualty, uh, trauma patients. So we are teaching you trauma. And uh, in second year, you start to do spine. Um, and also, when you are in final year, you do uh, tumors, neuro-oncology. Uh, you can also assist when they're doing neurovascular and, and, and so on. So there are many things you do also in fourth year, not only spine and final year. So from third year to, fi uh, to final year, which is fifth year, you only do neurosurgery. Then after that, the last year, you have to write an exam. So we have three papers. The first one is MCQs. The second is the short essays. And the third one is long essays. After that, you do a oral exam. And after the oral exam, you go and do uh, the clinical exam. You go in the ward, they give you a patient. There's a long case and short case. They give you a patient, you clap the patient, then you present to professors. They start to ask you questions. Then there's also a long case. No, a short case, sorry, where they can just bring you and tell you that this is a paraplegic patient, can you examine that patient? That's short case. And uh, after that, uh, you do, you defend your dissertation, your thesis, you go and defend that. Then if you pass, you become now senior resident. You are now a neurosurgeon, but according to the medical council in Zimbabwe, you are now a specialist. The university gives you that degree as a specialist. Specialist, but for you to register to the medical council, you have to do one year under someone who finished uh, more than five years. So who can train you again? You are working under him, or you can stay at that or, or hospital, or that's the moment for you to do fellowship. I can say, okay, after that, let me go to Dr. Marco Meloni and do my fellowship. Uh, and after that one year, then I have to register to Zimbabwe as a specialist. So which uh, the program in Zimbabwe, it's like six years, uh, like six years for you to register. But if you're a foreigner and you think like in your country, they don't need that uh, uh, year of senior, reg senior reg uh, registrar or senior resident, you can just finish, then you go back to your country and work. Yeah. But if you are a Zimbabwean, you have to practice in Zimbabwe, you have to do that one year, then one more year for you to register as a specialist. So that's the program in Zimbabwe. Uh, for myself, I supposed to finish my training since last year in November. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one, one month before our exams, there was a strike. And that strike went up to February this year. The moment they called us to go and write in May our final exams, unfortunately, locked down with this corona thing. So we are just awaiting for the exams. We don't know, are we final year? Are we still one? Are we, still, we don't even know what we have now, what we are, we are now. So we are just waiting for <laughs> the lockdown to the, the corona to be okay under control so we can go back and write our final exams. So that's about neurosurgery. I just want to encourage, um, my last word to encourage all juniors who want to do neurosurgery. Neurosurgery is beautiful. Neurosurgery is the among the, the, the department where you can tell where the lesion is without imaging. When you are taking your history properly, when you are examining the patient, already you have an idea about what is happening to your patient. 
imaging are just coming to help you and to confirm what you are thinking about. So please come and join us uh, in neurosurgery, especially in Africa, we are still few. My country, we are 80 million population. Dr. Ilrik knows very well my country. We are 80 million population with uh, seven neurosurgeons. Four in the capital city, uh, two in the east of the country, like in my province, uh, we have only one so far, Dr. Sarah, uh, who trained in Senegal. Uh, she's now here. So there, are, we have 11 provinces. There are nine provinces or eight provinces without neurosurgeons. So we really need neurosurgeons here. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Kabulo. This is um, great information. Uh, Dr. Gomsi, um, please go ahead. And like we said, um, keep your questions coming in the in the chat box. As soon as Dr. Gomsi finishes, we'll start having this um, interaction where we ask all those questions and have them um, answer. Go ahead, Dr. Gomsi, please. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hope, hope everybody is safe with COVID. And uh, yes, as I said earlier, I am Natalie Gomsi. I'm a Cameroonian. I just got into residency some few months ago in uh, Abidjan. Um, before going uh, into residency, let me just give you a story, a little story of what happened before, okay? So I finished um, my med school in uh, 2017, in uh, July 2017. Uh, I had the luck that I already had this aspiration. Where did my aspiration come from? Let me tell you, let me tell you from that. It's what, when I was in third year, there is this young neurosurgeon who came into our class and was giving us a, and gave us a, it was a course on a traumatic brain injury. So usually I had the passion for neurology, neurology uh, before that, but it is that uh, main course that that surgeon did that made me start loving neurosurgery. I saw it as something different. Yeah, neurology was good, you see, because uh, uh, the pathologists in neurology are generally expressive, you see, are generally expressive. So I love that. I love the way it was tricky, and you needed to be very, to have this sense of observation in order to see neurological pathologies. So, but with this course on traumatic brain injury, I started liking uh, neurosurgery. Actually, the presentation was so good. When I remember that when we finished, all of us were overwhelmed. We started clapping because he was very young. And we were just like, how can a young guy like this be a, 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 a neurosurgeon? So it really triggered me. I think that was where my passion grew for neurosurgery. So when I got into sixth year, uh, I chose my, uh, my theme of the, my thesis. It was on basal skull fractures that I finally did in seventh year. Uh, I had a good, uh, a good, uh, a good marks. I can say like that. And uh, but unfortunately, uh, it happened that uh, uh, my the boss, as the director of my thesis, was not really okay for me to start neurosurgery. So things started going worse for me. I started feeling bad. I remember that I met. One year later, Eric, and uh, Eric was just like the person who came and gave me hope again. Eric said, um, no, don't think inside the box. Think outside the box. If you want to be a neurosurgeon, you don't have to go fast. It is not how fast you go, but it is how far you go. I remember I was working with Eric every day. Every time he was we were talking on phone, or he was giving me, searching for opportunities for me everywhere. Then we started AFAN. We started AFAN because uh, I remember we were three, Auric, I, and, um, and Dylan. Sorry, he's not here. Because we saw that medical students are not very impregnated with the neurosurgery. So we wanted to give each medical student in Africa, we don't have limits. Each medical student in Africa, that opportunity to have a big brother like Dr. Nuru, a big brother like Dr. Gabulo, a big brother like Dr. Marco Wood, who make them feel the same thing I felt when I was in the third year, because there are not many neurosurgeons, as you know, in, in, in Africa. 
So we started a fund. With the FM, we started presentations where we had the luck to have people like, you know, surgeons like Dr. Marco who was always there with us. We happened to have, have much more opportunities. We had so much opportunities that uh, what uh, people didn't know is that I got uh, a, an acceptance letter from FES in Morocco on the 22nd of December, 2018. Uh, so things just happened like that, but I couldn't go to FES. So uh, I stayed determined. I stayed determined, though many people were saying that you're a woman. Why do you want to go and do no surgery? It is too long. It is too personal sacrifice. It is too heavy. Why a woman? Why, why don't you just do a little thing like, I don't know, clinical biology or pediatrics, and then you get married and then finish with that? I was just like, I want to do neurosurgery. You should leave me alone. <laughs> I want to do neurosurgery. Everybody was just like, is this girl really normal? Will she be able? Will she get married? Will she have children? So you see, in the African nurse, you see, uh, there's this thing that we have for women that they only have to get married. We have to evaluate them from their house, how they keep their house, how they do babies. But I stayed determined. To do neurosurgeries, my dears, you have to be determined. You have to dream. You have to put all the negative, all these people who are coming to say, uh, no, don't you think? You have to put them aside and then you move with those who are ready to push you forward. That is what happened to me. I tried even to go to Zimbabwe. Dr. Kabulu was there for me. I tried everything I could. Luckily, I finally had in Abidjan. I remember when I had in Abidjan, I was just like, oh God, this is not my first choice. Oh God, what will I do? I remember I was talking with Sydney every time. Oh God, is it good there? Oh God, then Sydney told me and said to me another thing. Residency, it is not marks that it is not beautiful everywhere. You have to fix your own objectives of what you want to do into your residency. And the objective is you want to be the best as you can. I went to Abidjan, today I'm in Abidjan. Since I arrived in Abidjan, I know I was a little bit skeptic. I was skeptical, let me tell you the truth, okay? I was very skeptical, but when I arrived, I met people like Professor Kaku, I met people like Dr. Conan Landry. I saw the infrastructures that they had. I saw the organization that they had. And I'm telling you, the truth is, what you have to do is not to choose where you want to go. Just send your letter anywhere you can. If they accept you somewhere, you just go. Because I'm so happy to be in Abidjan. In Abidjan, they have a laboratory, an anatomy uh, laboratory. They have an anatomy laboratory. They do stereotaxy, they do endoscopy, they do uh, surgery under the microscope. They do, they do almost all what I was seeing only on the presentations, foreign presentations. So I am very happy to be here. I'm very happy. Now, what you have to know, uh, and speaking to everybody who wishes to enter in surgery, you have to fix goals, your goals from the beginning on what to study. You have to know that you have a personal sacrifice to give. Usually that personal sacrifice can be a uh, time. It will be your time because it takes a lot of time. It's very capricious, neurosurgery is very capricious. The whole time is only neurosurgery, usually. You have to have personal resilience. You have to be obedient. Because you know in surgery in general, you need somebody who is, who is up to hold your hand, to move forward with you. You can be, if you're too harsh, for now, like now I am under Dr. Igor, Igor Nietzsche. He's the one who is pushing me for his, the second year of in Abidjan. I think he'll present himself later. He's pushing me forward. He's dragging my hand. You understand what I'm saying? You have to be that obedient. You have to have somebody who is in front of you who holds your hand. 
you have to sacrifice your social life. I'm sorry to say that, but it is the truth. You have to sacrifice your social life because it takes so much time and there's so much things to learn about it. That if you take your time doing another thing, you can't do neurosurgery and be a mannequin, for example, and be, I don't know. You can't do neurosurgery and be a, I don't know, a singer, a, a rap musician, a musician, because it takes so much time. I didn't say that you cannot play music in your house, no. And it's just say you don't have this social, uh, you, your social life is a little, bit, a little bit shut down because it takes most of your time. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. For example, let me tell you where my patience, uh, I, I'm starting, uh, let me just tell you where my skills of patience is starting. When I arrived, they said, for the first, for one year and a half, for 18 months, my dear friends, people are not supposed to do neurosurgery. I was just like, well, what is this again? Where have I landed to? <laughs> what will I do? Where am I wanted to do neurosurgery. What's happening to me? So he explained for the first year, for example, you have to do three months in that, either in general surgery or traumatology. After that, you have one month that you do in reanimation, one month in the laboratory, anatomy laboratory, one month in um, in cardiology, one month in uh, ENT, one month in ophthalmology. In ophthalmology, I have to do six months in uh, in uh, in, neuro in neurology. So that's what's taking those eighteen months usually. But the truth is, at the beginning, you know, you, you feel like, oh no, I want, I, I really want to start directly. With time, you understand that each each uh, fellowship that you are doing is important. Each internship, sorry, that you are doing is important. For example, in general surgery, usually when you do your DV, your, your, your VP shunting, you know that you have to open the abdomen. So you have to go to general surgery to learn how to open a part of the abdomen to different to put to put in a, a, a VP shunt. You have to do traumatology because in traumatology, you know, usually they, they share patients. There's the brain injuries, there's the 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 the, 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 the spinal injuries. So you could share usually the same patients. You could even share usually the same materials as the as the orthopedics. So there you will learn how to know the type of material that you have. In ophthalmology, they will learn, you will know how to use a, an ophthalmoscope. You will uh, to see the papillaries. You know when you have a, a high a intra, a high intracranial pre, intra pressure, usually you have uh, an edema of the pap of the, of the uh, papillary edema. So they are teaching you. They teach you how to read some um, uh, visual. How they call it? Um, uh, you know when the, a patient is having a tumor of an adenoma, for example, of the when of there's the, a hemianopsia, for example, of, of the of, yeah. When yeah. there's a name and due to the anatomy of the pituitary gland, you have to learn how to read the by temporal baby. I'm not saying you have to learn how to read this. You have to learn how to in ENT, you know, we share the score base with the ENTs. So you have to learn, for example, in ENT, the endonasal, the nasal uh, anatomy, the facial anatomy, to know where you pass with the endoscope if you want to go through endonasal. So everything that you do is with patience. Everything that you do is with hard work. Everything that you do is with care. But this is my first year, and after this 18 months is finished, we only do no surgery. We won't have anything. What again I admire is that they have a system of mentorship. We have mentors. When you arrive, they are, they are, they are they, because they are not, they are not, they are some like nine professors. So we are under nine professors who who have different subspecialities. For example, for six months, you can be with, uh, the, 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 with the, a neurosurgeon who is really specialized in skull base, or endovascular, or neuro-oncology, or functional, or spinal, or even pediatrics. So that makes things really, really interesting. That makes you to learn with your mentor all the pathologies of his specialties when you're under his mentorship. And we rotate mentorship. That's admirable.
But for now, let me say uh, the barriers because all this it doesn't come easy. You understand what I'm saying? Don't think you just wake up one morning and just say, I want to do no, I want to go, I'll enter into no. No. You have to, for women, I'm saying to women, let me address to women now. You have to face sometimes what you call some gender inequity, some gender barriers, you understand? These gender barriers, you, have, you may not find it everywhere. For example, here in, uh, in, uh, oh, in Abidjan, I don't, I, I didn't have it, I don't have it in my service, but I faced it in other services. You know, this thing when you arrive and someone will say, uh, why didn't you do pediatrics? Why did you go and do no research? My dear girls, don't leave yourself down because of that small, I can see what, idiot question, because I am a, neuro, a neurological, a neurological, a neurological uh, uh, resident. Why do you ask me that question? You have always to move forward. And don't forget, you have to fight for what you want. Always fight for what you want. Fight for what you want. I didn't say that people should fight physically, please. You have to fight mentally. You have to do what they call a non-violent revolution when you want something, especially for women. Don't put barriers, women. A marriage is not a barrier. Having a child is not a barrier. If as, as, as far as I know, uh, pregnancy is not an illness. So don't leave that they should put you down and then when you're maybe you're pregnant, you start lazing around and then and yeah, it's difficult though. I didn't say that it's not difficult, but you just have to know that you have to work as twice as, as a man does. Because for long, for long, that's the truth. Men have been the one uh, being in front for surgery. Not to talk about neurosurgery or traumatology or these heart surgeries. Not to talk about the surgeries where a surgery where you are doing, for example, the last surgery that I did with my boss, I did something like 12 hours. I was, I was, I was looking at the surgeon and I was up like that. You have to understand that you have to fight as twice as a man can do. Please don't fight them physically. I'm still saying it. Your fight is mental. Your fight is spiritual. Okay. So that's what I have to say. I'm very happy. I'm very happy that this session had, this, this session took place. I'm very happy of the, Auric, this is my, let me tell you, the first coach that I have, yeah? because Auric is always pushing, pushing forward, push forward, push forward. The big brothers like Dr. Nuru, Dr. Kabulo, Dr. Marco, who, who was there in front of me, to always push when I present, you know, they always say, no, there's this thing, you know, there's this thing you had to, you had to, that's so important. Don't be afraid to make errors. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Because if you're afraid to ask questions, you won't have answers. And you'll go back with your own feeling of your answers. Ask your questions. Questions are not stupid. Maybe the response can be stupid, but questions are not stupid. So don't ever be afraid to ask questions. And as I said in the beginning, don't, don't you choose where you want to go. There's an error that I nearly made. I nearly cost me another year. Don't choose where you want to go. Send everywhere. And then after that, if you have answered everywhere, then you can choose where you want to go. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, before we have the questions, I have a, a few questions that have been sent already. Um, so yes, it, it's a lot of people are following this, although they're not here. Um, we, we're going to present two residents that are here. Um, they're not presenting, but it's good to know that they're around. So, Dr. Igor Nietzsche, uh, please, can you present yourself? Uh, you're muted. If you're speaking now, can you unmute first? Hello, Presente. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, go Hello, ahead. Go my ahead. name is... Okay. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Nietzsche Ayuji Igor. I'm from Cameroon. I'm second year neurosurgeon in Africa. I'm happy to be a FM member. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Igor. And we have another um, uh, female resident, and it's always great to have um, uh, female residents here. Dr. Aminata, uh, please present yourself. Um, good evening. Um, thank you for uh, introducing me. Um, I am training in Zimbabwe, and Dr. Kabulo is my boss. I'm in the third year. 
Um, yeah, I'm also open to any questions on females in neurosurgery anytime. Thank you. Uh, we, we're so happy to have you. Um, uh, this is wonderful. So I'll, I'll, we already have quite a few questions. Um, let, let's go about it. Um, the very first one, uh, I'll address this to those who are the more, uh, all three of you, obviously, if you can uh, one after another give um, an answer. So the first question is, how do you get into neurosurgery residency? So what do you have to do? This is from medical student, uh, a physician, trying to get into reg residency in Africa. How do you do it? What, what are the steps? Dr. Nuru, if you can start, maybe for like Senegal and Morocco, what should you do? Thank you, Ulrich. And uh, I have to, uh, before to start, I want to congratulate uh, Natalie for his uh, for her talk. It is very um, emotionally and uh, congratulations, Natalie. And uh, you have to know uh, everyone, woman, man, we can do neurosurgery. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your talk, uh, Natalie. But to get in neurosurgery. I know that, uh, like, uh, I am doing, I am working about one paper uh, about the, the uh, training in Africa in neurosurgery with my boss, uh, Professor Wahabi. So, because nowadays uh, we don't have a lot of center um, uh, who train, who um, uh, give training in neurosurgery. In my country, in Benin, we don't have school of uh, neurosurgery. But I remember when I start my first year of medical school, my first course about neuroanatomy that make me, since the, these days, um, to know that and to involve in, in about neurosurgery. Just my first course about neuroanatomy because it was so clear for me that neuroanatomy is the way to perform good neurosurgery and to understand um, uh, to understand uh, uh, nicely everything in neurosurgery. So that is my personal um, motivation um, come from this moment, my first course about neuroanatomy. So when I go to Senegal finally to continue my medical study because in my country they have Many problem of like many in this uh, in two thousand seven. Uh, I go, I, I I left my I after my baccalaureate. I left my country to go to Senegal and, uh, but I, when I finish my study in Senegal, I would like to, to I would like to um, to do my residency course in Senegal, but in the same moment, um, uh, the president of. Uh, uh, a jury of my thesis, uh, he called me, he said, you are a brilliant uh, boy, and um, I think, I, uh, I believe in you, you will, you will really do neurosurgery, because many students just take thesis in neurosurgery just to, um, to, to have the, the medical uh, uh, doctor degrees and uh, finish, but I, I am, I believe in you that uh, you will really, really do uh, neurosurgery. It is Professor Saho, and um, my regard for him, maybe if he, he see this uh, movie, uh, this video uh, one day, he come, he tell me, in, uh, uh, they have a, a scholarship about World Federation of Neurosurgery uh, Surgical, but it is not all center in Africa who have uh, opportunity um, uh, to be accredited, uh, to have this accreditation. But he will send a recommendation later for uh, Professor Hamlishi, who is the boss uh, uh, of this program in Morocco, because just little country uh, in Africa uh, have this accreditation. I think uh, they have in Morocco, in South Africa, and uh, also Recife Center. I don't, I don't know if you know this center. Um, Koseka Recife Center, things like that. And uh, in uh, Egypt, I think. And also, uh, they have one project about one Africa um, hundred uh, uh, program about uh, Professor Majid Sami, who also uh, try to to send people in all this center who is accredited by WFNS, and they give scholarship of these uh, attending um, who want to go to learn to 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 do this training in uh, North Saudi. But it is so difficult to have 
to be selected. And, uh, but I was really uh, motivated, like I told you, and have all this determination. I tried to, to, to send my, my request, all paper that they, they asked to me, I sent all that. And they take a longer time, seven months, I think, after, they send me an acceptance letter about WF that, yes, you will be selected and you will start in Morocco. So Morocco, I don't understand well their language. So I go there to start my, uh, my residency course. So I will answer you after about, uh, I didn't, when I start my talk, I didn't um, interview details about how we done uh, residency because in Morocco it is a little, um, they have, they, uh, we have a little um, uh, different uh, way, but uh, everything, but anyway, the result is the same, it is to, to when you finish five years, it is to be able to perform uh, no, general neurosurgery, but correctly general neurosurgery, because you can, uh, you can, uh, you, you, you can uh, have this, uh, motivation to be, to, to perform school-based or to perform uh, um, spine, spine surgery or pediatric surgery or neuro-oncology surgery if you are, you are not a good general neurosurgery first. It is very important. We should learn well, step by step, to be a good general neurosurgery and after, like Dr. Cablo said, perform one year or two years to fellowships in one subspecialty. Because in Africa, we are, we, we are not enough. So if you finish your, your, your course and you go back to your country, the first thing you will be facing it is the general neurosurgery first because you, you don't study, you will find everything in the same moment, uh, like uh, material, because we have enough lack, lack of materials to perform. In my country, they don't do school days. So it is, it is very difficult, uh, but we've, all these young people who nowadays involve motivation and want to do neurosurgery, I believe that the African neurosurgery future will be better. I believe in that. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Nuru. Um, so um, next, um, Dr. Kabulo, if for a medical student today, how do you get into residency in Zimbabwe? A medical student somewhere wants to get into neurosurgery. What are the steps? Sorry, Dr. Ildrick, can you come again, please? So the question is, for a medical student today who wants to be uh, in the neurosurgery program in Zimbabwe, what do they have to do to be um, in the program? My network is not stable. Oh, sorry. So you are uh, crashing, can't get you very well. Okay, I can, get, I can hear you now. Hmm. Can you come again, please? Yes, yes. So uh, a medical student wants to get into uh, your program in Zimbabwe. What should they do so that they can be considered um, into the program in Zimbabwe so they can be a resident? How do they become a resident? Thank you, Thank you so much. If you want to be a resident in Zimbabwe, you have to apply to the university. There is an application form you have to buy. As a foreigner, it's 70 US dollars. If you are from Zimbabwe, it's 50 US dollar. You buy that application form, you fill it, and you submit with all required documents. They will be there on that application form. Then you submit them. So you have to submit a year before you start your residence. So for example, by now, uh, they should have opened already for next year, for 2021. So the deadline will be like around 30, 30 May. Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank they you. They call you for interview. They call you for interview. So you submit to the university, the university will send the file to the department. Then they will call you for interview. You go through the interview. If you are far, you will do it on Zoom or on Skype. You do that interview, then the department will select uh, the candidate and send to the university and say, okay, uh, you sent us seven candidates, but we just uh, we retain two only. Yeah, then from there, you get an admission letter, an offer letter. You go 
there locally in Zimbabwe, then you start the process of registration to the university, then registration to the medical council. It's a long process, but now at the medical council, they are now requiring the ECFMG registration. So you have to register first to ECFMG before you register to the medical council. Uh, then you start your program. Okay, thank you, Dr. Okay. Um, Dr. Kabulo. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Yes, so I, I think that uh, you, um, I, I forget to tell you also mm -hmm. that uh, you can, uh, if you want to get in residency course also without uh, the business scholarship, you can do that in Senegal and in Morocco. Mm -hmm. It is the same way, uh, like uh, Dr. Kabulo said. One year before you want to start your residency, you will just send your all your documents, but um in senegal like example it is the boss of the residency course who will get give you a, um, a acceptance letter mm -hmm. if the boss of um, uh, uh, this uh, residency course in like in senegal didn't give you um acceptance letter you can't send your your document requir requirement uh, that that they require to uh, university of uh, uh, dakar like example it's impossible so the first thing you have to do is to apply. It is about a let motivation letter, recommendation mm -hmm. letter, and uh, curriculum, uh, uh, your curriculum, uh, with, um, your CV, and you send all, all that to the boss of the residency course. So if he accepted you, in after you will, uh, you can come to do your residency course. But uh, you have to know you will pay uh, some fees uh, to, to, to do your, your residency. In Morocco, it is another way. Everyone who wants to attend, who wants to come to do residency course, and he is not Moroccan or he is not study in Morocco, because uh, like my uh, young um, uh, colleague uh, Francois Adjou, who comes from Togo, who is now in first year of residency in Morocco, he comes to study in Morocco. So he start his first year medical school in Morocco. So that is another way mm -hmm. for someone who study all the medical school outside Morocco and who want to come. They have something they call uh, um, AMCE, uh, who it is on Moroccan Cooperation International, who collected the document. But before your document come to the, uh, for, for this uh, organization AMCE, you should. Uh, send your document through your ambassade in Morocco. So now, example, in Cameroon, if someone in Cameroon wants to come to do residency course in, uh, for, a, for any um, speciality, uh, you should all send your, doc, your, all your, your, your request, you should send that for, through your ambassade. And your ambassade will send that to IMC, IMC will send that to the ministry, and after ministry will send that to the faculty. But before to do that, it is also important to send a uh, motivation letter to the board of the residency course in the uh, town, in the city that you want to go to learn. Maybe in Rabat, in Marrakech, in Casablanca, you should send a letter for this boss of residency course who will send you a sentence letter to to have you in the, his program of residency. So that is the way you should do. And I know that in Cameroon you have something like uh, I don't know scholarship um, uh, department who collect all the the the, the requests about specialite and send that through the ambassador to IMC. And now they study that and uh, give you. You you be selected. You will, uh, they will accept, they will send you after letter of acceptance to uh, to go to the faculty to do your paper to be uh, to to be uh, inscription of to be to re, to do your registration to be a resident. And now you will go to the department. But I will come back after about the, our program in Rabat Center in the detail. So I'm okay. sorry. In the, uh, Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Nuru. Uh, again, before Dr. Nathalie um, responds, we have um, uh, Dr. Gilbert, who's a consultant neurosurgeon from Kenya, who just joined. Uh, Dr. Gilbert, if you um, can unmute yourself and present yourself to the group, please. Mm, I think you're still muted. 
that's right. Hello, Dr. Gilbert. Hello, everyone. Yes. Hello. Hello to you. How are you? Yeah, good. Um, can you present yourself you? to the group, please? Okay, okay. I'm Dr. Kilbert Korea, consultant neurosurgeon from Kenya. It is a pleasure to be part of this group so that we can discuss various situations in the medical field. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're happy Thank to you. have you. Thank you. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Um, so, Dr. Natalie, um, please tell us what your experience is like or um, what a medical student will go through if they want to be um, uh, 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 in a neurosurgery residency in Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, it, it's quite easy. It's quite uh, simpler. Let me just say it's not that easy, but it is more, much more simple than the two previous. So, um, first to have the information that uh, the, 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 the program is launching the entry into first year. When you have the information, usually uh, they will ask you um, uh, some papers to write an exam. So we enter here under an exam, uh, through an exam. All of us write an exam. If you pass or if you pass well, that's how they take you. That's all. That's all. Okay. It's simpler. Okay. Um, thank you very much. So, um, oh, 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 okay. Okay, Dr. Meloni. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Um, so, so the, um, so the next question we, we have in the, the, the next question we have here is, um, so how, I think, I think this has been um, answered. So how do you manage financially during your residency? I think this is a big problem for a few people. So how, how, how do you manage this in terms of tuition and you living during residency? How, how do you go through this? Because it's a long, it's a long training, right? So Dr. Um, Nuru, um, you can start and then we'll have Dr. Kabulo. I don't understand the question. How we do? How do you manage your finances during the training? Ah, okay. Yes. But um, I think, uh, but for me, I have scholarships, but also I have my own money because uh, um, the scholarship is not um, enough to to recover to to cover everything. But we try to to to, um, to save money, like you can say. Okay, and uh, to stay uh, not uh, I, I think I think Dr. Nuru cut out. Uh, okay, so oh, to what? Sorry, and, Dr. Uh, Nuru, you cut you cut out for a bit. You cut out for a bit. Uh, there was a, a network issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now how you to... now, now 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 we can hear you. So you you were saying you had um you have your own you have the scholarship and then your own personal finances. So in your case, uh, the scholarship has helped you bear some of the burden, the financial burden, basically. Yes, exactly. To 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 pay your apartment and something uh, to go to hospital. Yes. Mm. And uh, but also, WFN scholarship can help you also to attend a lot of meeting. Uh, but uh, my advice is to don't live so far uh, than your hospital where you yeah. uh, you you want to do your residency. You should live maybe 15 minutes uh, in car or maybe 30 or 40 minutes at work. If you can stay also uh, so close, it is better. But uh, you should manage your times, like uh, uh, Natalie said. You should manage your time. You should be advocacy. Uh, you should really, really be um, uh, all your times. It will be with neurosurgery because uh, you can do neurosurgery uh, residency course and have uh, uh, other things like it will be difficult to do the same the two things in the same moment because neurosurgery will take all your times, but you can take some time to do um, like uh, uh, running, uh, sometimes one in the month or uh, one times in the three months to the third, um, in the three months to go some somewhere with your friend to do a chilling because 
it is important also to don't always be so no you will be um, you will burn out so sometimes it's better to do uh, little little things uh, yeah, to relax yeah. to relax to relax yes important okay. So I think for in Morocco you will need maybe I think uh, per month um, like example uh, maybe five hundred five hundred dollars five hundred dollars you can uh, per month you can live in Morocco with uh, uh, to do your residency course the average mean five hundred dollars it is uh, okay. Per month, you can live in Morocco and uh, study and do your residency course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Dr. Kabul, um, same question, obviously, and then a follow up to that question will be uh, a follow up to that question will be um, what is your take on residency programs abroad and those in Africa? So, so the first question would be, as we said, financially, how do you manage during residency? The second question will be, um, what is your take residency program abroad or in Africa? Okay, thank you so much. Um, is it my question? Yes, yes, Dr. Kabula. Okay, um, financially, it's very difficult in Zimbabwe as a foreigner. Dr. Aminata will tell you the same thing. So, in Zimbabwe, when you are doing your residency, you don't get paid. Even when you are doing your course, your whatever, you, you don't have a salary. So, you are paying school fees, you have to pay your rentals. Uh, transport everything on your own so it's a bit difficult myself I had a, a private sponsor I had a private sponsor was paying for me and it wasn't you know scholarship is not really a lot of money so you have to know how to manage that money and sometimes you also go back to your family or yourself to to aid because scholarship, they can say, okay, we are going to pay school fees for you and um, the month will be giving you this amount. But if you go there, uh, then uh, you realize that just to register at the medical council, it's more than thousand uh, US dollar and whatever. There are many things to do, which are not in the scholarship, you see. Because what is happening, you get your sponsor before you reach the place where you are going to train. Mm -hmm. which is not difficult. You have signed already your papers and when you are there, you find other things. So you can't go back and say, let, let me sign the contract. Okay. So that, that's the problem with um, Zimbabwe or everywhere else when you are going to do your master's. I had my private sponsor, but it wasn't really sometimes enough uh, to cover everything. So in Zimbabwe, as a foreigner, it depends when you are from Sadak countries or you are not from Sadak. If you are from southern countries, uh, you have to pay something like 400, uh, 4,500 US dollars per month a year. And if you are not from Sadak, like uh, Dr. Aminata, it's uh, 9,000 US. So it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, that's uh, the first question I think I answered. It's, it's difficult, but you need, you need money to, to finish your training. Even if you have a sponsor, maybe a sponsor is going to say, okay, I will cover everything. But even if he says everything, you don't know everything, maybe it's better to sign when you are already there after knowing what is going to happen there. Mm. Uh, so what was the second question? So the second question is, um, some, some um, students or aspiring neurosurgeons wonder between doing their residency abroad out of Africa and doing it in Africa. So what's your take on it? Okay, it's, um, it's still okay to do whatever you want uh, because uh, like for us, when you're already in second year or third year, um, you have to apply. You know, there are conferences almost everywhere, courses you have to attend, like in take it, the, the IBNC, International Basic Neurosurgery course. Uh, if you have your money, you have to pay. If you apply, they'll give you scholarship for registration and, and uh, accommodation and food. So you only pay your flight ticket. So sometimes we meet there. I remember, and I have also, because I didn't uh, prepare that picture. We are training in Africa, but one day we were in Portugal. We wrote a paper, it was an exam. And Zimbabwe won. We got the, the book from Professor Benzel. Mm. Professor Benzel from the uh, US, yes. 
He came there, he said, I have a test. So I used smart than Benzel. So we were 200. In 200, 40 residents and 160 young neurosurgeons. So we wrote the paper. Uh, we were among the first four. Then uh, we went to the final. It was Dr. Nemaire who won that prize. He's from Zimbabwe, you see. So residency, whatever you want to do, uh, if you read a lot, you attend to international courses, you'll be okay. It's almost with neurosurgery, since we, we meet always with others from other countries, it's always there. But the only thing with abroad, it's um, when you are outside Africa, you have almost everything. Sometimes in Africa, we miss something. We don't have neural navigation. We don't have stereoscopic neurosurgery in other centers. You see, maybe in Morocco, Dr. Muru has a chance to, to see that. In other centers, we don't have stereoscopic neurosurgery, um, no radio surgery. So that's the, 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 the advantage also of being abroad. Yeah, thank you. OK, OK. Thank you, Dr. Kabulo. Um, Dr. Uh, Natalie, so the, this next question is, um, we've heard about research and uh, we would like to know how to start research. So what is your advice? Someone who's never done research, trying to get into research, how should, how should they start? Uh, for me, for example, what, what worked for me, I won't say it's a, it's a, general, a general point of view, is that uh, I had uh, that luck to have a uh, Men, mentorship is important. That you have to have somebody in front of you who knows how to do it in order to, that's the first thing, in order to try to link you or coach you on what you do. Now, the second thing is that uh, you have uh, some, um, you know, some courses who can open your doors to research, who can open your doors to how to write a research paper. Like, for example, yesterday I was still watching on what this academic writing to so try to modify my way of writing things so that it shouldn't look so much emotional but much more in an academic way so that everybody should understand what you, what you say or what you what you're writing from um, uh, research is open to everybody everybody can do a research for my little experience um, you know before before uh, sometime before Eric, I always thought uh, there was this limitation of about research that oh no researches must always be done only by either the resident, either the doctor, either the either the, this high person. You need this high person to push you forward. But no, I just want to say I'm happy. I'm I'm happy that today I'm on that side to say no because uh, I met people who told me that medical students can also do research. So research is just a question of having a good mentor who knows what he's talking about, what research is all about, who has an experience in research, and uh, also uh, uh, taking on courses on research on how to write a paper, how to develop, uh, develop uh, thinking, your yeah, thinking. And uh, another advice again that I got from my coach was, um, he told me to download uh, 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 um, he told me to download Evernote. That's it's an application who permits you to jot down all the ideas that you have. Because all the ideas that you have can, maybe it may, it may come in a, in a scattered manner or in a, in, a non, uh, in a non-usual manner. You can jot it down either vocab, uh, vocally or by writing, and then you develop it later. For me, I experienced it through mentorship. Uh, uh, primarily through mentorship and then now I'm trying to continue the development by writing. You have to also write. Try to write papers, try to correct yourself. I think uh, and don't be afraid, always push harder. That's, oh, okay. so that's how I experienced it. Mm. Okay, so uh, oh, we have a comment. Uh, let me just read the, the comment. So Dr. Uh, Karshi says, from my point of view, having trained on the continent is best whenever possible. Uh, when you grasp basic the basics of neurosurgery, then you may be, you may need to go abroad to see what is what the world of neurosurgery looks like. Um, yes, thank you so much, um, Dr. Karshi. Um, Dr. Nuru, 
you've um, um, you, you've uh, been able to present abstracts at a few international conferences. So how do you how how does a medical student a resident uh, manage to uh, submit? Um, an abstract. So how do you find these conferences? How do you submit the abstract? How do you choose which paper to submit to an, um, at a conference? Okay. Thank you, Yurik. Um, well, me, uh, I start to submit abstract when I, I was in, I start my residency uh, course. Uh, it is important, like um, Natalie said, to have a mentorship. But uh, you, you have also um, have good motivation to, to, to try to work hard for yourself. Because uh, even if you have a mentor, maybe he will not have always time for you, but you should also try to do something and come to him like that, uh, it will be uh, nice. Um, it is like I told you, when you, you see uh, a cases, when you read a lot about uh, uh, what you see in, uh, in your department, you can find a lot of cases who it is uh, uh, rare, rare cases, and uh, you will go to literature to, to read about that. And also, I think all of them, uh, all, all of us here, when we, we, uh, we do a medical study, we learn little about statis, um, bio, bio uh, research uh, how to to write our thesis. I think we have a lot um, little uh, notion. But, but for those uh, who want to involve in uh, research, it is uh, important to learn about uh, bio bio statistical uh, uh, courses. Maybe you can do a um, university diploma. It is a, a plus for uh, to uh, to involve more in research. So about the conference, but in my department, um, it is a guidelines. You can, you can pass uh, to one year to two years normally without uh, uh, do one or two uh, communication abroad or to write one paper uh, to, be a co or to be a co author. Mm -hmm. It is uh, um, important if you want to, uh, to pass in the next uh, year. So that is the goals that we do when we start uh, residency. But I know it's not all people who follow this, that, because, uh, you know, in Africa, it is not uh, yeah. uh, uh, systematical. So, but for one who really have this motivation, this is just to start with little cases, and after when you have time involved in big uh, research work, like uh, uh, case, uh, series cases, like original research, like and little, little, step by step, and mm -hmm. to involve with uh, other colleagues who are doing research work, you can involve with them and work with them. It, you will learn more how to, because it is step by step. More you do, more you know. And when you know that you don't know, you will know. So it is step by step. And uh, may I encourage all people who, uh, at, who start a residency to always in one year, try to publish one or two papers, like goals. And it is, uh, it is not because you will not have also time with shift, with many, many um, activity. You will not have time, but you can do violence for yourself. And when you come back to try to work, to try to read the article, to review, it is, it is interesting. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, so uh, the next question will be for Dr. Kabulu. Um, Dr. Kabulu, what makes uh, a good resident? What are the qualities for being a good resident? Okay, thank you, Dr. Eric. Um, I think a good resident is uh, someone who reads a lot, someone who respects his senior, someone who is following whatever they are uh, teaching him, someone who respects patients, and also another key uh, for you to be a good uh, whatever resident, you have 
to teach your juniors. Mm. The more you teach, the more you learn. So when you are doing, when you are learning from seniors, the moment you are like in third year, your colleagues who are coming in first year, do your best. When your bosses are not there, it's you doing, leading the world around, teach your juniors. Because they'll be asking you questions. The moment you want, you know that tomorrow I'll be leading the world around, I have to teach, you read a lot. Mm. A good resident has to forget about social life. Of course, after two months, three months, you can say, okay, let me just go and relax. But there's no social life for a resident in neurosurgery. So you have uh, to read a lot. Because for myself, at the beginning, it was like, if I, I had to read twice what they are reading once, okay, because of language barrier and whatever. But if you, you are now okay with your English or you are learning your training in French, you can read and understand everything. If you spend two days without reading, you feel yourself like you are late comparing to others, your colleagues. So you have to read almost every day. Mm. So those are mm. like a few characteristics of a good resident in neurosurgery. Mm. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Dr. Kabulo. And Dr. Kabulo, um, uh, I'll just push this to Dr. Nuru because um, Dr. Natalie is a bit different in this situation. Um, so English is a big language for um, uh, science, science, right? And you, Dr. Kablo, you, Dr. Nuru, your first language was French, so you had to learn English. So how did you, how did you go about it, um, Dr. Nuru, then Dr. Kabulo? How did you go about learning English and expressing yourself in medical English? Okay. Um, me, I have chance, I have chance to done, uh, my school uh, is uh, one of uh, the private school in Senegal who is uh, American. Uh, program. So when I was study, uh, um, we always uh, we have a medical school, a medical um, uh, English uh, uh, like schedules. So me, I um, I really, really, really um, be um, serious with this uh, uh, with these schedules, and uh, I always when I want to read a book. Always, I prefer to read a book in English. When I want to study all, also about article to, about one uh, cases, about one pathology, uh, since I was medical school, I prefer to read that in English before. Um, um, the best, uh, the best uh, book and uh, the best uh, paper in, about the pathology in the world uh, is written in English. So all these times I try to read a lot of book in English and uh, I try to, uh, to, uh, to go step by step about my English medical uh, uh, schedules to learn more how to, to talk. Uh, uh, it is not the same like someone who um, the first language was English. Because me, I do all my study when I was uh, young in French, but I love also English. So uh, I try always to, when I have opportunity, to read in English and to learn in English. It is very, very important uh, to learn English for everyone, not just in neurosurgery. Nowadays, you can do science, um, or medical uh, uh, Medic uh, and to be a doctor in medical uh, school and don't read or don't learn about English, even if you was learning in French. No, it is impossible. It is important to learn English. You have mm -hmm. to, to, learn, to learn both French and English. It is important. Okay, okay. Yeah. thanks. And um, Dr. Kabulu, what, what was your experience? Um, how did you get about learning English um, in residency? Okay, thank you, Dr. Ivory. Uh, for me, um, it was totally difficult, like I told you before. Uh, I went to Zimbabwe two months, I went in November, mm. and I supposed to start my program in January. Of course, I knew how to say good morning, how are you, the basics, mm. not like the, 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 the good English. And I arrived in Zimbabwe in November, doing my registration process, everything. Then in January, I started my program. It was difficult because we were doing basic sciences with everyone who is doing masters there. 
we were doing basic sciences together. Those doing pediatrics, uh, whatever, guiding, uh, and so on. You go, uh, they organize basic sciences, you go there. So the, the teacher, when he's teaching, if he pronounces something new, you are not thinking about that. What is that? Oh, is this how you pronounce? Is this how, how you pronounce that? The moment you are thinking about that way, he has gone already teaching other things. So it was like that. I think I didn't have a good advisor just to tell me, please come before uh, so you can learn language. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, I was like uh, a, a deaf person. And even hear what they are talking about. So I tried to go to a English teaching center. Uh, I was going there every uh, afternoon. Then it was now difficult because you go there, you learn English. Then tomorrow when they are asking about neurosurgery, you don't know anything. So <laughs> either English or you just try to force yourself at home, you read English. So I was reading with my dictionary. I bought my Oxford. Uh, easy for, for, for beginners. So I was reading my dictionary. I was also translating this. My I'm, 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 I'm grateful to Google Translator. Mm. I was there every day, reading, translating the difficult word, and so on. And the other things, it was like you go in the shop, you want to buy a shirt, for example, you just ask the guy who is selling there, hello, how much is that, that, that? You point it, they say, oh, the shirt. Then you get it, oh, so that's a shot. Mm. You know now that kilot in French, it's short in English. So it was like, I learned my English like that, talking mm. to people, translating, and uh, yeah. So since I had only friends who are speaking only English, and they, it's only English. So I, I was a fast learner. I was a fast learner, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, that, that's great, thanks. Um, just. To, to wrap up, last question. This is for Dr. Natalie. Last question. So, Dr. Natalie, um, from what we've said, what are the opportunities? What, are, what is the advice you will give uh, a young member of AFAN today trying to get into neurosurgery? What are the opportunities they have at AFAN? What should they be doing to get themselves ready for residency? Um, AFAN, uh, thank you, Dr. Rick. Um, Ethan has helped me in, in that way that uh, we met some big brothers like Dr. Kabulo, Dr. Noro, and uh, Dr. Marco, who uh, helped us to, for example, if I can say, for example, you shouldn't come to Ethan because maybe your, your objective is that you want a resident uh, to enter into residency in or surgery. No, the idea behind Ethan was to impregnate African students to neurosurgery. Now, through this impregnation, we had the chance that we had these big brothers who also gave us guides, gave us guides on how to enter into neurosurgery, a neurosurgery residency. For example, Dr. Kabulo who is here, he mentored, he, he followed my, maybe he was even more, much more uh, feeling, I don't know, much more, he followed my uh, my file with much more uh, how can I say much more passion maybe at the time more than even me because I remember the emotional feelings that I had that I had through this big brother I'd never seen I only met him on Ethan but who was trying to help me to enter into neurosurgery residency that's why you should really what you call respect your elders I think that's something important you should also be grateful he did all what he could so that I should enter into zimbabwe unfortunately there's this strike that happened that's that was really unfortunate i think we should follow there you have to follow we have the chance in ifan that we have this sorry, uh, guys, I'm there. <laughs> sorry. Uh -huh. we have the chance in ifan that we have these people this no surgical hesitance that are ahead of us and who can hold our hands. Ifan has helped me not only to enter into neurosurgery, but it has also helped me to be a better presenter. I remember the first day that I presented uh, on the, uh, was, uh, I, I presented, there was an assignment that he gave us here and I presented. I remember the, the face, what my boss said, he said, oh, 
what you presented was even more than what we asked. It was, was very overwhelmed. The truth is, in Abidjan, uh, you speak French. I have that look that I speak both French and English. I had a base in English. I had to pursue my medical studies in French. And hence, now I'm pursuing now my residency program in French. Though the boss here says it's better English because English is a universal language of scientific. What I advise you guys, all those who are members of IFAN, is that when we are, when we come up with a plan, when we come up with a schedule of a presentation, even if you're a student from where we don't have no limits, please, no limits. We don't have no limits. Whether you're from, I don't know, whether from Zimbabwe, you're from Kenya, you can't be a participant, you can't present. It will be hard in the beginning. For me too, it was hard. I was medical doctor, but it was hard for me to present because I'm first agoraphobia big, so I don't like usually crowds. That's that's but with Ethan, I've been able to conquer that. And as time goes on, I'm presenting better. It has opened me opportunities for like I don't know if you know Professor Ipe. I've been able to talk through Ethan. I've been able to talk with people that I didn't even imagine myself talking with time. I didn't even know that even if I enter into neurosurgery or I finish the neurosurgery, I'll ever talk with these people like that, that's on video conference. So I think IFAN is a very, very good initiative that was initiated by Dr. Ori. And uh, I think it's a, how can I say, un tremplin. It's a, we'll move forward. It, it's a, um, let me just say for, for the beginning, for, for, for all the aspiring neurosurgeons, that's all the students, all the medical doctors who are not yet uh, uh, into residency, I think it's a very uh, good uh, practic practical uh, association in order to know the future of uh, neurosurgery. Thank you. Well, um, thank you so much. Um, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm sure if we we can go through uh, all these questions uh, for another day or so. Um, it's been an hour and a half already. So much has been said. We'll be having other other conversations, other talks and presentations. A new schedule will be will be up very soon. Uh, we'll make sure that um, you're all informed about the next uh, presentations. And obviously, keep your questions coming in the WhatsApp group. Um, uh, we've shared the link there. If you can, if you copy and paste them in your own WhatsApp phone um, through a message, you should be able to 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 join it. Um, thank you so much to our presenters today, our panelists, um, Dr. Nuru, Dr. Kabulo, Dr. Gomsi, and to those who came as well, uh, Dr. Uh, Aminata. Um, well, some have left. Dr. Marco, obviously, um, Dr. Regis as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Igor Nietzsche. Thank you all for coming. We've had um, a lot of, we're having a lot of messages because um, some people were following as well um, uh, without being panelists and everyone is um, very, um, very, very happy about this. Uh, thanks for taking the time and have a great weekend. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Ulrich. Goodbye to everybody. Hey, Zolo. <laughs> <laughs> What? You are here. You tell us it's all the background. It's all the see It's all the background. But like you tell me, what you tell us? You buy a pair of jeans, but wait, the guy is where? It's all right. It's all right. Oh, my baby, how is it? It's all right. I take a blue. It's all right. But we have lost our smile today. You are cashed out. 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 <rire> ok, je suis content de te voir, c'est bien. Tu te, tu te, tu te, tu te prépares, j'espère, hein?